already into the meeting okay it's already live i see okay so it's a live on uh, youtube as well so thank you very much everyone for joining in warm welcome to the bbmp madhyapura zone interaction with the uh, resident welfare associations and other citizens so we are happy to have the bbmp team represented by none other than chief commissioner sir mr gaurav gupta and uh, randeep d ias bbmp zonal commissioner uh, and uh, manjula n zonal coordinator for covid uh, and uh, venkata chalapati sir joint commissioner for bbmp madhyapura and team has joined in so warm welcome to all the bbmp team and to all the residents and resident welfare association representatives that have uh, joined in so bf has been represented uh, i mean overall represents 950 plus apartments and within this madhyapura zone 285 apartments are rep- are part of bangalore apartment federation today we have uh, mr nagraj rao who is president of bf and vikram rai the uh, secretary and uh, myself dheeraj and pradeep who are governing council members and zonal leaders also present along with other leaders so with this i would uh, hand it over to nagraj rao sir for a quick 2 uh, minute uh, welcome and then let's hand it over to gaurav gupta sir and team sure uh, welcome gaurav gupta sir and the entire bbmp team and also my colleagues in the baf let us have a good interactive discussions on the present situation of the covid i just want to make about two three points here and i leave it open first is we would reiterate a vaccination camps to be read to be to be started in the apartments whenever the vaccine is available so that the overcrowding in the in the hospitals or in the phcs is, is avoided uh, to avoid further transmission of the pandemic second is we have started the, we have been seeing the triage centers i think it requires little more support on the manpower because a person who is ailing when he reaches over the triage center he should have a solace either in the hospital or a medical support the third one is we have been getting a lot of complaints about the non answering of the call centers i shall be requesting that to strengthen the call centers and the war room uh, call centers and also many people told me 1912108 doesn't respond at all on the other hand we have been trying to put a lot of i mean many vac- many more vaccines into the picture all these vaccines create an immunity in the body we from the baf have been working on a health advisory in addition to the regular advisory to make individuals little immune by some small techniques which they can afford to do uh, at home uh, that will be released in a few days with these few words i once again welcome uh, mr gaurav gupta sir randeep and dr uh, uh, jula and the other team and also my colleagues in the baf and uh, uh, vishnu to take over thank you sir uh thank you very much so let's get started so uh, just as an opening remark uh, before handing it over to gaurav gupta sir is so we all understand that uh, madhyapura is one of the zones with the uh, highest number of cases uh, while there are uh, you know uh, war uh, efforts being made by the bbmp team on war footing and we really appreciate the bbmp madhyapura team who has always been approachable and always response uh, starting with joint commissioner venkata chalpati sir and manjula ma'am and randeep sir they've been really helping and proactive and from bf perspective when we have uh, in checked or interacted with other zonal war rooms and other zonal in charges and officers and we can say that perhaps uh, madhyapura has been the best in terms of response and reaching out for instance even um, J- joint commissioner venkata chalpati sir he is even reachable at midnight also so if there is an issue he is always there uh, to answer your questions on the call and in that way we have had a proactive collaboration with bbmp but one important thing all residents should keep in mind and listen carefully to what the bbmp team has to say we must do all we can to contain the spread of the disease by implementing any measures that we can take and we have to own up that responsibility as apartment federation and the resident welfare association and assist bbmp uh, in reducing the cases and you know hospitalization and other, other things are taken care by bbmp but we must own up and also do our part to reduce the spread of the cases with that I hand it over to gaurav gupta sir thank you Uh, okay very good morning uh, to all of you uh, let me first of all congratulate uh, the bf team for uh, being very responsive 
uh, all uh, uh, Dr. Nagraj Rao as well as uh, Vikram as well as uh, all others. So you have uh, been a splendid uh, pillar of support for us. I'm sure through you, uh, the associations have also got connected. I recall that uh, uh, we all uh, uh, got connected on various issues pertaining to vaccination and uh, testing in the in the in the last uh, in the second half of March and then thereafter the first half of April also. And uh, it's indeed heartening to note that uh, we can reach out through this channel uh, to various residents of the city of Bangalore. So we look forward uh, to a close interaction, uh, not only through this crisis or through this uh, difficult times, but also in the future. Uh, I also would like to thank my colleagues uh, for uh, joining here, uh, Dr. Manjula. Uh, she is a special representative uh, from the state government uh, to oversee the functioning of uh, uh, the Mahadevpura zone. Uh, I have to take this call. Uh, just one minute, uh, please. Vishnu, the questions which have been received, categorized one, also shared with the BBMP team, right? Yes, Vikram. The, all the questions have been shared with uh, Jesse, sir, and then Randeep, sir, and then Manjula, ma'am. Uh, so they have the 23 right. questions we have. So yeah, sorry, sorry. I, uh, yeah, so I would like to just thank uh, Dr. Manjula, uh, the, who is a special representative from the state government uh, for uh, overseeing the COVID situation in the, in the Mahadevpura zone. Uh, uh, Mr. Randeep, uh, who has been a, a special commissioner uh, in BBMP and also the zonal commissioner for Madhepura zone, and uh, all other colleagues. I, I would also uh, like to convey uh, uh, thanks and appreciation to, uh, to all your volunteers who have been working with us in various initiatives, etc. So, uh, having said this, uh, let me only uh, uh, give you a broader oversight and uh, then get into some Mahadevpura issues very quickly. One is that uh, vaccination, uh, uh, people, uh, 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 there was a hesitancy earlier, now there's a lot of eagerness, but the supplies uh, have not been very regular and steady at the government level. We have been taking it up at the government level. We hope and expect these things will get sorted out very, very soon. But till such time, we have to go ahead with the, with the uh, testing at uh, the uh, primary health centers. They have been directed now not to uh, perhaps, if there is any crowding, they can go to areas beyond the primary health center buildings also. And uh, the, I am sure that uh, Randeep uh, and others will uh, elaborate on this point. Uh, so that is one of the issues. I am told that beside Manipal and Apollo, many other hospitals have given up on the, on the vaccination because they don't have supplies either. So uh, the, it is incumbent on uh, us to take the responsibility and uh, we have sufficient uh, supplies uh, in the recent one or two days and we hope that it will uh, continue in the future as well. As far as the testing goes, uh, I think testing is, uh, is steady and uh, 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 two uh, uh, processes. One is through the primary health centers. You can get them yourself tested. There are uh, contact teams uh, which have to do the primary uh, uh, contact testing, etc., at uh, the residence place itself. And thirdly, you can go to private labs in order to have yourself tested. What is uh, most important is, uh, and that is what I wanted to stress in this uh, meeting, is about the need for COVID appropriate behavior among all the residents. Because what uh, is necessary is uh, why the lockdown, why the restrictive orders is because we need to have isolation in order to prevent the further transmission of the virus. And we seek the support of all the resident welfare associations and all the individuals uh, who are residing there in order to ensure that there is isolation. Isolation not only of the people who are positive, but also the people who are uh, not positive they also should isolate themselves. If everybody isolates, in that case, the transmission of the virus can be cut. And uh, that is the objective of the lockdown and other processes. So we request you to maintain that. 
and uh, uh, i need not have to stress that ma mask is the biggest uh, raksha kavacha against uh, this and uh, that will have to be done uh, as far as the tracking is concerned uh, some of our teams have to uh, reach out to your uh, community to your uh, residents houses in order to isolate people uh, some places they have been fairly successful some places they have not been successful and uh, i would request our teams to get into further details but it is necessary that uh, uh, that there is some kind of uh, you know house to house visits and uh, and uh, isolation of the people who have turned positive so that the others can be kept away after 10 days i'm sure that uh, the situation will uh, become all right most of the people will recover without any major medication medications have been prescribed uh, and uh, that can be taken up further now as far as the treatment protocol is concerned i'm sure all of you are well uh, literate uh, very well educated people and uh, uh, you don't really require too much of medication uh, uh, you know that uh, regular course of zinc uh, vitamins and uh, uh, paracetamol and uh, doxycycline like uh, or azithromycin kind of antibiotic and ivermectin uh, uh, is said to be the standard thing if you have if you get into some more complications dexamethasone etc can be prescribed by the doctors concerned now i don't want to get into that dr manjula is a medical doctor also i am sure that uh, she will be able to uh, get into this we have other uh, medical doctors also here dr sohendra who is a health officer of madhepura zone and number of others uh, i'm sure they will be able to uh, talk to, uh, talk to you about this as far as the trial centers are concerned i had a visit uh, with uh, randeep and others uh, uh, three days back uh, uh, we would like uh, at least the three triaging centers to uh, start in madhepura constituency and similar three in uh, uh, in uh, the kerpuram constituency both of them in, uh, included form the madhepura zone so six uh, triage centers hal command center has already been uh, open and uh, uh, our colleagues will mention beside that uh, there is a keys hotel which has been started in uh, uh, brookfield area uh, uh, that uh, is again open i uh, two days back i visited it we have seen the people doctors interns and other people with with basics uh, uh, equipment and uh, uh, and others uh, we are augmenting a lot of volunteer doctors uh, we are augmenting on the uh, oxygen concentrators and others so that uh, not only you can triage the people or screen the people but also maybe you can have some beds which are also oxygenated beds likewise oyo town house is another center which has been identified i'm sure that uh, randeep uh, he has had a personal visit uh, yesterday and i'm sure that he will be able to tell you more as far as 1912 call centers is concerned there was uh, uh, there was uh, indeed lot of augmentation that has happened there and now Uh, two days back uh, we opened a overflow call center which uh, basically transferred the uh, uh, additional calls to another call center and uh, uh, i have checked it out you also can check it out 1912 call center waiting time is zero however uh, uh, if there is any uh, improvement further required uh, in that case it can always be worked at uh, we have opened the physical triaging center so that you don't have to call 1912 we are working out a protocol to see that you can book directly through the protocol uh, to the uh, triage center itself so that uh, uh, you don't have to go only to 1912 to book uh, book a bed you can go book it to the triaging centers and the referral uh, services there would work we have worked hard to see that 24 hours uh, within 24 hours the test results are revealed there was a lot of complaint on this that uh, the test results are getting delayed a uh, lot of labs have been uh, uh, pulled up and uh, some of them closed also uh, we our objective remains that within 24 hours you should be able to get the uh, test results uh, within 24 hours you should be able to get one phone call from the state war room aptamitra and one phone call from the zonal command and control center so uh, which will be basically be able to guide you and uh, uh, beside that obviously the uh, triaging uh, that will physically triaging that will happen so on the resident welfare associations i'll uh, i'll say last two words and finish one the resident welfare associations i request if you can reach out uh, to your residents and mention what is the individual responsibilities individual responsibilities means that you cannot go to each other's houses means that you cannot uh, you know eat food with others 
you you have to eat and drink alone and uh, that has to be followed the more you follow it it is safe for all of you and this kind of uh, restrictive orders etc will be lifted by the government as early as possible second thing is that uh, if you have uh, any symptoms you can get yourself tested kindly get yourself tested as early as possible there is no shortage of testing kits and all that have yourself tested we can further have testing at your doorstep also along with our colleagues etc we can work it out the third thing is after testing immediately isolate do not wait for the test result immediately isolate and uh, wait for the test results it should come in 24 hours if it doesn't in that case give us a feedback uh, uh, i have uh, gone through the testing data uh, uh, eight out of 10 labs are giving in 24 hours some of them are taking 48 hours but we are trying to minimize everything to 24 hours so that uh, there is no delay but if you isolate and you know the protocol of uh, the medicines and all that nothing much is required in case of any crisis uh, we you can reach out to the triage centers or 1912 and they will be able to allot a bed there was a shortage of oxygen beds and other beds etc now no longer and you have beds available uh, there is a certain kind of uh, uh, still uh, tight situation with regard to icu beds i'm sure it, that will also pass it's only the surge that has led to this kind of uh, you know excess demand and uh, i'm sure that our hospital infrastructure will be able to pop up very well in the days to come so i'll stop it here and look forward to uh, interaction with you. I'll be there for some time. My colleagues will take over. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Gaurav Gupta, sir. Yeah. So, um, Randeep, sir, Manjula, ma'am, Venkta Chalapati, sir, your comments, your thoughts on the situation and what should be done. And over to you. Uh, uh, Manjula, ma'am, you can go. Uh, thank you, Randeep. Thank you, sir. And thank you, BF team, for allowing this opportunity today here. I think last year also we have interacted once or twice and uh, there was a lot of support from the federation side and they've been very uh, you know vigilant in terms of uh, following cases of isolation and quarantining and all that it has been a lot of support is there from the apartment side also uh, apart from that there were a lot of issues also which were raised which we were also asked to address and then we were it was kind of a cooperative initiative that was there likewise even now it is going on i think all of us have uh, have experience with this uh, but then, um, sir, uh, like already commissioner, sir, already mentioned about a few things. The triad center is something which has started. Uh, we have initial issues, but then we'll be overcoming them. And then uh, also the protocol will be evolved. But uh, that doesn't mean that if somebody needs help, they shouldn't be going. Right now, HAL is by and large functional. And uh, we have one more in, uh, uh, this is called Navia Hotel. These two are already functional. And the KC, uh, the KR Puram Hospital also is getting functional. So others, other three, like sir said, that was also coming in, in a day or two, that will also start functioning. So the triad center should be put into use. I we request everyone mm -hmm. any emergency to reach out. And now, like sir mentioned, we have even oxygenated beds at HAL itself. And a lot of these milder cases can be managed there. We have doctors around the clock and we have nursing staff. And we also have an in intensivist or a consultant who's supervising them. So that way, the triad center at HAL is by and large full-fledged. So we request all of you to you know, spread the word around. If there's anybody who needs any has kind of assistance, can reach out. Uh, the call centers also, in, uh, there were some complaints. I think it was also mentioned while speaking. I think one of the speaker mentioned that the call centers were not responsive. Uh, but I'm not very sure whether it was 1912, which was mentioned, or it was a zonal uh, command center. Because zonal command center, as far as I know, is working around the clock and it is working well. Um, people do respond. There may be some delay sometimes, you know, when the calls are, uh, the lines are busy. But otherwise, they get back. Even the missed calls are also, we call back. We have a system there. So if there's anything which is still missed our notice, because I do also check up once in a while, I call up in the night, just like that. When any patient calls me, then I in turn try to reach out through the call center only. So it's been working and then we have also hired and fired a few people. Actually, we fired and then ultimately hired also. So we have taken steps as and when it has come to our notice. Even mm -hmm. beyond that, any problem, please let us know. We will see how we can make it better. Uh, uh, there were, uh, I think I'll request uh, Commissioner, Chief Commissioner, sir, also to help us here. There were a request from some of the apartments that maids should not be allowed inside. And then there's a divergent view. Some of them say we need them because we are alone, etc. And some of them have a view that 
they are the ones who may be the carrying infection and things like that so the maids is something which will probably will have to discuss today and if sir commissioner sir agrees then we can take a decision on that and it can be uniformly followed across all the uh, whole city that is uh, which can be done um other than that i think we can take the questions which are there as and yeah. when you know somebody can ask them and then we can take because there are specific questions like what yes. are the disinfectant which has to be used and all i think the doctors can help us here so then we can take it up uh, question by question if somebody can take it otherwise or yeah. uh, put it on the presentations and we can take it one by one sure uh, that is I all from my that. side just now let us know yeah, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Randit sir. Any few words from your side so that I mean we have questions. Twenty-three curated questions. We can. Yeah, yeah. So I will not take much time. I thank yes. the honourable chief commissioner for taking time out to join this. Uh, the minute I mentioned it to him yesterday that we are interacting with Madhupura, he immediately consented to join. So we thank uh, sir for joining and Majula madam as usual. Uh, she is uh, relentlessly kind of reviewing uh, on a daily basis uh, the COVID situation in Madhupura. Uh, uh to put it frankly chief commissioner sir was concerned that uh, the cases in mahadevpura vis a vis the other uh, 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 zones is not uh, coming down expected times and he was concerned that the concerned containment measures probably the contact tracing is probably not happening uh, to the expected levels so i have uh, reviewed in detail for about 3 hours yesterday in mahadevpura itself and i uh, came to the conclusion that yes testing to some extent has been uh, not on the expected level though we do test the highest in the uh, city but still i feel uh, another 25% enhancement of testing is required which i flagged to all the officers and we would be taking up aggressive testing uh, in the coming days uh, the teams were there but they will be uh, activated uh, to ensure that the other aspect uh, before i leave it open for the questions is uh, something which is of utmost concern uh, in terms of the containment measures uh, i think we have had a multitude of cases coming up in the apartments and the gated communities and we have documented this uh, in terms of the number of cases so i uh, have taken the liberty of uh, uh, giving directions to my team that any apartment which is seeing cases in double digits the containment measures will be one step higher then probably uh, where uh, it needs to be where presently it is presently we don't do much of um, actual access control or uh, containment measures but now probably we need to move to the next level wherein we are having uh, some close person observing the movement in and out of these places we may have to put a small check post just uh, at the end of the road uh, to just observe the movements uh the main uh, movement probably people coming out to buy their groceries we would also expect the rws probably if i think you did it in wave one where you could facilitate uh, supply of groceries and other materials to one single source of contact rather than each one stepping out of their house and going secondly probably at 4 5 pm in the evenings we also do notice people coming out walking within the campus and all of that so i think for at least the next two weeks we should have some kind of a self discipline and isolate ourselves uh, and not really allow uh, the primary contacts or uh, the because in flats the way i see it is everybody is a primary contact as long as you are within that gated community within those uh, seven eight uh, structures that exist within that campus so these are the two things i would like to highlight we will be aggressively testing and our containment measures will be at one level or one notch higher than probably what is being done in the other uh, zones uh, so having said this i think we will uh, move ahead uh, on the control room uh, 1912 has confirmed that most of the 1912 calls are connecting to the madhepura control room uh, shri vipin singh sir yesterday had confirmed that and soon the uh, uh, this uh, uh, the pri lines the hunting lines will also be increased at the zone level so that uh, call connectivity will no longer be an issue so i'll stop it here and i'll uh, request um, you to take up any specific questions that yes, you want to clarify it some of this which we are not able to clarify uh, presently we will take it up uh, in writing with you yeah. the following uh, days thank, thank, you. thank you very much randeep sir so yeah i we will just we have 23 questions hope we can cover it in within the time and the priority will be based on the questions that are already given and curated and some there are many people on the youtube channel posting questions and also in this chat mm -hmm. we will go uh, if, if only those these questions does not cover those uh, you know the questions that you are looking for so uh, i'll start with the questions uh, topic wise so there are 23 questions the first uh, topic 
our first area of the questions that started is the uh, you know containment of the disease so uh, you know the first question is about empowering rws while like like we mentioned that bbmp madhyapur has been doing a fantastic job so can they empower rws in certain aspects where there is a little bit of ambiguity uh, with bbmp orders versus how the some of the residents are like um, uh, i should say like you know the whatsapp lawyers or some something like that in a sense like they try to find some loophole in a in a wording or some minor things here and there in a sense they try to come up with some excuses so one of the thing is uh, clear guidelines on the domestic helps and sometimes if the committee members if the people are walking with the or jogging with the masks on sometimes they lower the masks and uh, you know the rws do not have authority to penalize such people right even though the, we have the cctv footage and uh, some apartments are already voluntarily forcing people to do a travel declaration at the entry the moment they see coming from an airport cab or with a luggage etc and uh, some uh, to some extent what is happening right now is like as randeep sir rightly mentioned to contain the spread of the disease uh, the jcs are also discussed with me yesterday so i think a stricter enforcement or closure of the accesses like you know seal down of the tower or maybe uh, micro containment zones are required and at the moment since there is a short shortage of staff from the marshals perspective or police perspective to monitor so many containment zones some sort of an empowerment to rws would be helpful uh, as manjula ma'am mentioned is there any plan in place to cover all these aspects to to empower more of rws to spread the disease and contain it better yeah, i'll take that question uh, uh, uh see we we would like in fact the rws to do this uh, uh, rather than bbmp entering the campus and uh, trying to enforce these things we understand the uh, privacy um, of residents and uh, we really are not very comfortable sending our marshals inside and trying to discipline we believe that people will be self disciplined uh if any enabling orders to the rws required chief commissioner has already issued a very detailed order in terms of what are the guidelines that rws need to uh, kind of follow uh some things are very basic i mean things like mask violation social distancing by social distancing of course is a slightly abstract construct but still uh, basically if we find that people uh, assembling together uh, we need to take away those uh, the social uh, gatherings which which otherwise usually happen so please understand that in the middle of a health emergency and uh, in terms of uh, empowering i do not know whether we can give you the power to find but we can definitely give you the power to report uh, if if anybody from the rwa even a resident of this um, association or the flat gives a simple call or a message to us saying that so and so apartment is uh, putting a lot of risk to the others then i can have my officers in there uh, penalizing so that that i assure you uh, testing will be taken up on a rapid scale i will enlarge the scope of what we call as a primary contact so with 1 is to 5 uh, which we are doing earlier we will probably do 1 is to 20 now uh, because that is the way we need to aggressively mm-hmm. go ahead and uh, track and treat because we are finding a lot of home isolation cases also landing up in hospital on the 7th or 8th day so we really don't want to take uh, any kind of a risk uh, we need uh, these things to happen micro containment zones and seal downs yes uh, we are for it even if i have to do it only for madhepura we'll have to do it uh, we don't have a choice madhepura tops in absolute number of cases being reported across eight zones though all the cases have come down across uh, bangalore uh, we have not come down on expected lines visa we may be a south zone or uh, a west zone uh, so even among the outer zones we still have the highest number of cases one does understand that there is a floating population and uh, we are a large area uh, but having said that uh, that is no excuse for us not to clamp down and if not now when so uh, empowering of rws i would say if a simple draft can be given mm-hmm. uh, me at my level or jc level we'll just endorse that and hand it back to you and that sure. piece of paper can uh, help you uh, kind of enforce within uh, all the across the resident welfare association so i will authorize uh, jc or if my signature is required at any time you're free to come and uh, take that because we are not going to issue anything which is out of the box i mean these are well known to everybody and uh, we, we we will uh, do that and and things like domestic helps coming in moving out obviously it is a no no for which is a, uh, a containment zone or which is a, a, a house where a primary contacts are, are residing or or covid isolation cases are there but even in other towers if domestic helps need to go 
we can always have a system of uh, uh, rapid testing or rt pcr testing also uh, so that we are very clear that this virus doesn't uh, really kind of spread i mean as they say the virus does not spread it's people who spread the virus so we need to be very clear uh, in terms of access control sure sir thank you and Mr. i will work Mr. with Mr. vikram Mr. if possible randeep sir please do consider if this can be done as well it's a simple quick hack if i may put it that way i think it was in application last year as well and we have found success in disseminating if there can be some uh, kind of uh, um, in certain areas where public announcements can be done we can actually facilitate in some of the uh, member apartments where a, where a loudspeaker announcement can be done just to reinforce that message we can get those messages also recorded and share it across a lot of times i think that physicality of a, of a of an announcement also creates a bit of uh, 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 impact i think today the sensitivity at least in maybe 15 20% of the population might be missing they might not have been directly affected and hence there might be a tendency to uh, argue against uh, something which is as common sensical as as uh, uh, following the restriction so if you can consider maybe for a day or two some kind of a, a, a physical announcements at the sites uh, which we will again record and then share it across as well i think that will also uh, have a a good impact visually for people to know that you know the next two weeks we will still need to not lower our guard down thank you i'm definitely will do it in fact last year we spent a lot of money in actually creating these uh, barricade structures and all of that since we are not doing that uh, this is a much low cost option uh, which uh, we can use very effectively and jc madhepura has a list of uh, apartments which are showing alarming trends of increase in cases so uh, that list is very much with him i would urge him that from uh, tomorrow itself uh, uh, that people start seeing these uh, uh, seeing and hearing these announcements being made so venkatachalapati uh, idan neevu naalene enforce maadi take it as my approval uh, please go ahead and uh, at least the apartments and the gated communities which are showing high number of cases i think some kind of an announcement uh, would have to be done thank you sir thank you sir thank you next so, next you want me to take the other uh, few questions or uh, are you going to specifically ask uh, people to uh, respond Uh, no sir i think i'll just go with the with the question so yeah fine so disinfecting yeah. you are saying that uh, all of us know that this has now transformed from being a surface contact uh, driven virus to an airborne virus now so i do not know how effective uh, uh, any kind of spraying sodium hypochlorite solution spraying will be effective i let uh, dr sunita and uh, surendra probably answer that but still for the optics and for uh, some kind of a, a feel good feeling if you do require we can always uh, take that up Uh, uh what is more important is your next question in terms of uh, sanitizing the lifts and all of that so i would as far as possible if you are living anywhere five floors and below try avoid using the lift uh, uh, use the lift only it is absolutely uh, necessary uh, 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 we largely in bbmp also use uh, uh, the stairs only even though the war room is on the sixth floor so these are extreme times so we need to take uh, some extreme measures uh, so i i would say uh, that yes sir. so uh, the specific yes, so question was about for instance so let's say in our apartment if somebody is going for a ct scan or a hospitalization we immediately sanitize the lift by like one of the ways right either suction of the air we turn on the fans within the lifts or sanitize the surface or spraying the liquid so any scientific proven thing which is one of these is better compared to others or like you said not nothing is proven as of now because nothing is proven now. Now. just say that wear your double mask and okay. uh, step out Okay. Uh, that is the only proven thing which i can say right now um, because this uh, probably two people who have never come into contact but mm -hmm. have shared a common space even uh, half an hour apart are getting the disease so uh, this clearly shows that it's become airborne now and uh, we really are not sure there no there no clear answers uh, to this yeah got it sir thank you uh, <clears throat> the next question is uh, i mean with the prevalence of so many variants some are more uh, fatalistic i mean more fatal than others so are what are the sops uh, currently to monitoring the disease intensity or creation of, i mean the different variants within bangalore are are we just doing some random uh, gene typing of the some patients in the hospitals or how are we doing it sending it to central agencies because if the variants are more deadlier the fatalities can be higher 
I think the genome uh, sequencing is happening. Uh, Dr. Sunita, would you like to take that? Uh, I think centrally it is happening, though we are not getting that uh, uh, feedback. It's probably... I, 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 if I can mention... Yes, that, yes. Uh, my request is that uh, uh, as far as the mutant uh, 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 is concerned, uh, let us not... Well, let us leave it to the experts and let's not bothered about it too much. I'm sure that uh, uh, a lot of work is being done on uh, gene identification and, and things like that. But uh, what is important is what we should do. Yeah. And uh, uh, our uh, behavior, if COVID appropriate behavior, etc., and isolation, testing in time, uh, treatment, whatever uh, is necessary, etc., we are able to do it. I think we'll be doing a yeoman's duty. Yeah. I, I know the concern is very valid that whether the mutant is being handled or not. But we will better leave it to the health experts in the country. Uh, there are uh, experts who know about it. And uh, uh, let's better leave it to them. Let's confine on what we can do. I'm sure the mask works for all mutants. And uh, let's wear a mask. Let's ensure that we don't uh, eat or drink with anybody so that we can uh, do it. Let me also take this opportunity to welcome uh, the uh, additional chief secretary, uh, uh, urban development uh, and also administrator of the BBMP, Sri Rakesh Se. Uh, sahab, uh, he is, uh, as a part of his rounds, uh, he has also come to the war room. And uh, I would uh, uh, heartily welcome him. This is a meeting of the Mahadev Pura zone and uh, uh, of the Resident Welfare Association. We have been doing it under the aegis of the Bangalore Apartments Federation. And uh, uh, I would request uh, you also to uh, say a few words. Hi, good morning. Nothing much to add. I'll be part of the deliberations. Only one request is that we have to take care of ourselves to this, this pandemic has to be defeated at both the levels, the health level as well as the mental level. BBMP and the entire government is at your assistance. My only quick point is let's not <clears throat> try to spread any panic or fear. We are one phone call away. Please bring it to our knowledge and we'll be there at your doorstep to do what best is possible. Thank you. And part of this deliberation, please go on. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much, sir. So I'll move on to the next question, I think, which is already touched upon by Randeep, sir. It's, it's about micro containment zone. So we have an old document, uh, which was uh, circulated or shared with the people on 3rd March 2020, I think, uh, with, with wave two, and there, there needs to be some sort of a changes that are required. So me and Vikram from Babsite will work and share it across uh, with Randeep, sir, and uh, JC Venkta Chilpati, sir. So if, if you think it's appropriate, please uh, issue that as an order. So that we can implement that for stricter containment within the Mahadevpura zone, which uh, me and Vikram will get back to you. Yeah, that's better, Vishnu. If the draft yeah. can come from you, then we yeah. can take it at our level, uh, the appropriateness. And uh, as I said, even if it is only for Mahadevpura, I do not mind uh, issuing that at my level. I will uh, take the consent of uh, Chief Commissioner also, uh, yeah. but uh, we'll have to do it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the other qu other question is on isolation enforcement. So majority of the apartments where they get to know. If you know who's the XYZ person in which flat they have the uh, COVID positivity and may, most people are adhering. But there are some cases where in larger societies where some residents do not inform the committee members when they're positives. And we fully understand the BBMP team and ward level PHC staff is also overwhelmingly involved in many other tasks. But is there some possibility uh, that, you know, periodically, at least once in two, three days, can they share the list with, uh, a, let's say, an, every apartment has an association manager or to a committee member so that uh, there are no surprises that uh, the positive cases guys are roaming around free? I mean, it's a remote case, but, you know, is there a possibility that we can improve the situation here to enforce the isolation better? Yes, in fact, I was coming to that same point. Now we have this data and uh, I do not uh, see it as a breach of privacy or anything yeah. when it comes to the sake of actual enforcement. Yeah. Uh, so probably if one authorized representative in that uh, uh, flat is kind of uh, intimated to us, yeah. then that list uh, uh, can be shared, uh, subject to, of course, that not being shared with others and being used purely for the purpose of ensuring that uh, the primary contacts, uh, because we do find a lot of primary contacts keep moving around, even before they're tested and, uh, or even if they're tested, we do not know 
uh, or the gap between the testing also even if it is like 24 hours 36 hours in that interim also we find them moving around so to to that limited extent of enforcement i think we need to uh, do this sure sir so so the way forward is like one of the apartment representative can get in touch or establish a re relationship with the phd uh, sir once for the township commissioner sir once so yeah. no 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 sorry uh, please go ahead please go ahead yes sir so uh, i would say uh, uh, the rwa head uh, mm -hmm. could be not authorized and that way it's easier for my joint commissioner to come and uh, get that list served uh, probably yeah. in a sealed envelope or something so that that is only for uh, your rights yeah. and to ensure and to report to us in case you are seeing any kind of violations we have a baf madhepura group you can uh, without sharing the names yeah. any apartment where you feel that uh, such uh, movement is happening yeah. please flag it there so that is goes as a warning to the other members also yeah. that an immediate reporting is happening uh, the minute they are seeing some people i have my own school friends college friends who keep messaging me saying the primary contact is roaming around the secondary the maid keeps coming and going so uh, so these kind of things keep coming up. So if we can work in a concerted manner and create that uh, kind of vigilance, yeah. uh, that will definitely improve uh, the situation. Sure, sir. Thank you. I'm moving on to the next topic. Uh, it's about the hospitalization. So, uh, so the, I mean, the first point is, the uh, first question is about the confirmation of beds. So fairly, like no, now the situation has eased up a bit uh, in the last few days, except for some ICU ventilator beds and some HD cases. Most of the cases we are able to get the beds, but one one point in in some cases it's not always is noticed is that uh, uh, the the lost there and uh, also. Uh, what happens is sometimes uh, the bed is getting cancelled or so allocation is also getting cancelled. So it happened in few cases. So is there any process improvement deficiency possibility in that side or your thoughts on that? I'll just take a couple of minutes to explain this process. Uh, there were some uh, uh, changes which we had brought out. Earlier, no SMS was going to the patient. But the last one week, we've been sending SMSs to patients immediately after a bed block is happening. And then there is a four to six hour timeline within which the patient has to reach the hospital. Uh, if he, he or she does not, then the system auto unblocks the bed. So we are finding a lot of auto unblock cases do coming up. And that is when the hospital, the patient reaches the hospital, uh, then finds that his name is not there uh, in the SAS portal. Now, Chief Commissioner, sir, and Honorable Administrator, sir, have been emphasizing this need to have uh, help desks at each of the hospitals. So that is getting activated and uh, soon there will be some branding uh, uh, of, of these uh, help desks, uh, wherein there is some person at the hospital to help such patients who are grappling with uh, issues of uh, BU number, SRFID, admission happened, but the hospital not taking them in. Uh, so one is this auto unblock, which I think you should tell everybody that as soon as they receive that message, they need to immediately contact, uh, of course, the BBMP ambulance also will reach them. But at times when there is a private ambulance available or if there is a secure vehicle in, in which the person can be taken to the hospital, uh, there is no harm in ensuring uh, that that person reaches there. Now, we are trying to bring in a workflow wherein if a bed is also auto unblocked by virtue of any kind of delay from the hospital, then we do... Uh, have some kind of automized blocking uh, in the, ne the next time around it happens. Uh, so that is one. Sometimes the hospital also takes the patient in, uh, but does not update in the SAS portal. So this, the patient should be equally vigilant to confirm that whether he's been admitted in the system. So the caretaker would have to ensure that because we have had cases where after 10 days of treatment, when the patient comes out, they realize the bed was not blocked. Uh, and then they end up uh, uh, contacting us. So please ensure that and uh, uh, our help desk will also get activated in full strength soon uh, so that they can be of assistance. Sure, sir. So key, two key points are one is SMS, checking the SMS. The second point is ensuring that, uh, you know, they, they're considered admitted in the hospital system. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if, I can, uh, uh, if I can say a little uh, uh, intervention. Sure, sir. Uh, one thing is that... Uh, uh, you see, 108 is definitely not for booking the beds. So uh, uh, I see some uh, 
screen in front of me which says 108 so 108 that is definitely not for booking yeah the uh, as far as 1912 is concerned or zonal war room yes they are uh, they are an option they have been an option uh, walk into triaging center is a new option that we have created we are in the process of uh, making it even stronger perhaps we will uh, if this becomes very stable we will give up on 1912 and zonal war rooms and we will uh, we will uh, upgrade all patients to the triaging centers itself but for that we need to see that first of all they are functioning properly and that's the objective uh, behind which we are trying to promote all these centers and uh, there's 24 by 7 uh, you you can go there in certain centers which are a higher level centers hcl for example is a higher level center and things like that and other places you can go uh, in two shifts but the numbers are given and there's a special number for every uh, triage center and you can go there you don't require a b number you don't require a 1912 number etc you can go there and uh, you can be tested uh, there itself you can be tested you can be examined you can be screened or triaged yeah uh, and uh, private uh, uh, contacts etc yes uh, we have been uh, pushing the private hospitals to come onto a single portal uh, through fana they have come into a single portal but i am told that not all hospitals are there so uh, if uh, all the hospitals on a single portal or they join our own portal our own portal is capable of taking care in that case it will it will become uh, uh, fine better for the residents uh, but so far it has not been we are working in that direction we are trying to see how it happens and uh, uh, so so that is uh, you will have to do individual bookings in respect of the private portal so uh, i just wanted to uh, say on on this issue uh and uh, overall sure sir thanks a lot so this is sorry please carry on yeah so there, there is one more question in the one of the next slides i can maybe i ask that question in advance now the triage process is new so some people are still trying the zonal war room 1912 uh, to get hospitalization mm. and is triaging capable of handling all cases because earlier when it was just for example hcl covid care center when i personally tried to reach uh, for admission for one patient they were not taking let's say below 90 saturation patients at that time before they become triage centers now are they entertaining uh, any because there are some critical patients with 50 60 lower saturation patients also is it that anyone with any symptoms can walk into triage center and they will take care of the hospitalization is Rani, that is uh, that can you take that yes so uh, see the desire uh, i think that is where we all desire to be finally that we have a 100% physical triage at the triage center itself anybody who requires hospitalization uh, we believe will come to a triage center uh, we believe will get subject himself or herself to triage because triaging serves a fundamental purpose of categorizing you in terms of your criticality uh, it can send back probably 50% of the patient saying you are good for home isolation we can hand over a home isolation kit there itself uh, that reduces the load on the critical care beds we can probably accommodate about 30% of them as you rightly said maybe saturation levels of 87 to 95 uh, now that our maternity homes and uh, level 2 ccc's like hcl can absorb them we are issuing an sop soon to these uh, level 2 centers uh, as to what uh, is the critical uh, cases that they can take uh, but yes definitely below 87 saturation with comorbidities age factor combined Uh, at best the triage centers attached to these level 2 centers can act as stabilization units for about 4 to 6 hours 8 hours probably but within that time frame we do need to find a tertiary care hospital yeah. probably a hdo or an icu icu ventilator bed yeah. and that is where we need to take a call very soon that uh, uh, the bed blocking facility invariably will have to at some point of time be given to the triage centers themselves but till we reach there we are tying up the triage centers with the local zonal control home so that the patient does not have to run around then it becomes the responsibility of the triage center to ensure that a patient who has reached out to them needs a critical care bed and then uh, uh, we expose them to the zonal control home and the priority uh, bookings start happening from them sure sir so if i may summarize so it's better if people with comorbidities and lower saturation not to directly go to triage center try for the hospital directly if it is a moderate symptoms directly walk into the triage center and there they will stabilize in the meantime the patient uh, themselves or the attendant has to find a bed via the zonal war room and in future maybe the triage centers will be able to allocate the bed themselves is that correct 
Yeah, yeah. Even today, there will be an allocation, but through okay. the zonal control rooms. Okay. Uh, uh, I would say that uh, if uh, uh, you go to the triad center, in that case, uh, it will be their responsibility to reach out to the zonal okay. war rooms directly. You don't have to make a parallel process for that. Sure, sir. Come on. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the next question is: uh, in many cases, some apartments or some places where uh, some patients are a little critical. Uh, attendants are trying to look for a bed or trying to contact zonal room or trying to find a way to reach triad center, but they may already have an um, oxygen concentrator or an oxygen cylinder available within their apartments, right? So uh, sometimes they don't know how to operate. So from uh, at least the doctors, uh, you know, uh, Dr. Surendra or uh, anyone can comment on, I mean, for novices, we are not medical experts, but what is the oxygen in terms of liters that can be given when we, when we are not sure how severe the patient is? I know it's a tricky question, but is there something that, that can be done for this? Yeah, you're right that it needs to be done under supervision. There is no doubt about it. And each uh, uh, person would be different and in terms of uh, what to be used and the flow. So, Dr. Sunita, would you like to take that or Dr. Surendra? Uh, sir, good morning, sir. Dr. Surendra here. Yeah, yeah. please clarify. Uh, there's a question. Uh, yeah, based on the, uh, the saturation is uh, between uh, 82 and 90 in the apartment complexes. Some of the apartments uh, of, uh, RWS have uh, adopted the oxygen cylinders on three, three to four beds. And uh, oxygen, uh, depending upon the severity, mild, uh, this thing, 4 liters, 8 liters, 16 liters, it will go like that. Okay. So any saturation level below 80 degrees, we have to shift them to the uh, uh, ICU and ICU ventilator bed. That is the uh, protocol is there. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, then the next question is, uh, in, in some cases, uh, there's been instructed Is it been instructed to the war room that the BU number is not, uh, because... There has been a case, even with uh, private labs testing, for example, Apollo, Manipal, or some of the labs, they are delaying a lot in terms of generating PU number, which is hampering uh, the hospitalization of the patient. So, what's the way forward for this? Is it uh, clarified that PU number will never be asked in critical cases, or what's the way forward? Sir? So, uh, the way it works is that the zonal control rooms would require the view number to block the bed because they need to search for the patient in the database. So, unless there is a view, that data would not be available in the CHBMS bed blocking portal. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. the zones also know how to escalate cases where it is only an SRF ID based uh, kind of a blocking. Uh, they do raise an escalation request to the super user at BBMP head office. And uh, such cases are added through an add patient module, which is available uh, for the super user. Uh, because we do believe that uh, such cases are uh, limited in number and uh, can be handled centrally presently. Uh, so that option does uh, 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 is available. We also have the option now open of somebody with a HRCT positive, uh, COVID positive, but an RT-PCR negative. Obviously, they also will not have a yeah. view number. They will just have an SRF ID. Yeah. So based on that, uh, also the booking can be done. Uh, so we have centralized these cases as of now. As and when the time comes, uh, in case such cases are increasing, then we need to look to decentralize these to the zonal. Uh, so the answer to your question is uh, that no, BU number is not a mandatory feature, though it is the norm, uh, but it is not absolutely mandatory because exceptional cases are handled through the SRF ID itself. Okay, sir. So we will we'll try to escalate maybe using via the WhatsApp group that we have if there are some. Yeah, yeah. you can uh, reach out to the zonal control room and they will immediately escalate it to the board. Sure, sir. Thank you very much. So, a quick time check. So, another question. Vishnu, we are at 12 30. You might yeah. want to go so, back to that. Yeah, I will just speed up the question. Maybe the next question I can skip because it's about the CCC setup. So, we already had a meeting and maybe I'll skip the next question about that. So, uh, we, have we have 30 minutes left. I'll rush through the next question. So, the next question is about, again, hospitalization continued. Triad centers is already uh, explained by Randeep, sir, as well as the Chief Commissioner, Gaurav Gupta, sir. So, I think we don't have to uh, ask that question again. The next question is, uh, again, in some cases where 
remdesivir stock um, you know is not available sometimes there is a delay in getting from the drug controller and uh, we know that it's not in uh, bbmp's hands and you know some black market players and third party providers are involved in it but uh, do you think as per the current situation the, there are enough remdesivir stocks and the crunch situation that was there in the last week uh, has it been brought under control because still some people always keep on reaching that we need remdesivir etc posting in groups etc so uh, see when it comes to the government uh, patients when i say government patients patients uh, allotted through the bbmp portal in government hospitals or private hospitals there is a very streamlined mechanism where sas uh, uh, takes over the supply of uh, remdesivir through the drug controllers uh, uh, logic but where we do face problem is for the private patients in the private hospitals who have been admitted uh, privately there is an elaborate process of the hospital raising an indebt there and uh, many of the smaller nursing homes and uh, others they do find it very tough for uh, reaching out uh, uh, because of the short supply as you have put it uh, to reach out so we are seeing a clear difference that uh, for the garment patients we do not find uh, much of a hitch they do get in case it is escalated then that is uh, brought to our notice but to private patients yes there is still a bit of a hitch i i am told that there is a nodal officer um, uh, at the state level who coordinates this um, uh, mr avinash menon is the nodal officer at the state level and uh, one uh, mr kempaya probably uh, from the drugs department handles this uh, but but for the government sure. patients it's sas themselves yeah sure sir okay thank you oh uh, the next question is about shortage so two set two parts to the question is are the alternative drugs uh, which are mentioned available in bangalore or how prevalent uh, that from your visibility point of view that uh, how serious and alarming are the cases in bangalore dr surendra you would like to take that that's a medical question sir uh, 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 sir you are not audible sir no no he is basically asking the question on the black fungus uh, whether we have adequate drugs uh, in the market to address that because that is also coming as one of the major uh, after yeah. effects of people who have undergone oxygen support and yes, uh, basically as far as i know the treatment is very costly and uh, 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 and in terms of uh, mm-hmm. even in terms of availability of the drugs yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Black, yes sir black fungus will be is caused uh, due to the steroid uh, treatment uh, given in the icu or icu ventilator and after the discharge this is the side effects from the steroid uh, most probably we, we use dexamethasone for the steroid treatment treatment uh, in the hospital sir and this is caused by one fungus like uh, mucormycosis and this affects the eyes and uh, involving the whole some uh, uh, even the central nervous system and uh, finally it leads to death sir this one yeah so the drug shortage is dr surendra so it's is it uh, not available because anywhere we are trying for some cases it's not at all available not just in bangalore i think it seems to be the case in other states also so Hello? yeah Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Rai, I, I'm Rakesh. Just want to give you a feedback on this. Yeah. Sure. Both this Remdesivir as well as this Amphotericin. Yeah. It is. Wi-Fi can see me. It is not in abundance, yeah. but the supplies are available. Okay. Because yesterday only I was sitting with Health and Family Welfare Department. Okay. They were trying to cross-check as to how many patients have been reported throughout the state. Okay. and accordingly what is the availability of the drugs yeah what i could see that there was not uh, any gap in that yeah maybe the number of cases that have been reported till now is less okay. but the government is very active and they have already procured okay so i don't promise that immediately it will be available but okay. as and when it is required if we are told we will make it available both in terms of remdesivir as well as for the drug required for black fungus that is amphotericin thank you very much sir uh, next question i think is already answered how many more triage centers so uh, i think jc sir has uh, and confirmed randeep sir also that there are three new covid care centers are coming up and currently there are two triage centers and uh, uh, 
uh, JC sir said he would share those details and which I will circulate uh, in the apartment groups, right? So then uh, moving on to the most, uh, I would say, burning question, uh, which is coming up regarding the vaccination of the vaccination camps. Like uh, from BAF side, we have tied up with several hospitals across Bangalore, for instance, like Manipal, Aster, and many other hospitals. So we have shared the data, how many uh, flats are there, how many people are there for vaccination. So they, I mean, they collected all the data for vaccination, but unfortunately, due to vaccine shortages, uh, they raised their hands at the moment that they cannot do the vaccination. That is one challenge. The, the second part of the challenge is that even if the stocks are available, for instance, there is such a backlog, even in Mahadevpura zone, which, which I'm handling for vaccination, there are at least 100 plus apartments which are in queue for vaccination. So I'm sure that the hospitals do not have enough staff to parallelize the vaccination process. So for this, JC, sir, uh, Venkta Chalpati said that he would personally, uh, you know, as when the stocks come, do the vaccination drives from BBMP side in the apartments. But how likely or how soon that is going to happen? Because right now, with a lot of so, uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Vikram, uh, I need to leave uh, because uh, we have another interaction scheduled and uh, I need to switch over to that. But uh, I'll just take this issue. We started with the vaccination camps. Remember, uh, Vikram, with you, and uh, our objective was that we should work very closely with the apartments so as to have vaccination camps in your locations itself. And then there was a reluctance, and there was perhaps uh, not, it was not authorized per se by the government of India. <clears throat> but uh, nevertheless, it was taken up in uh, certain places. <laughs> and why we have now restricted it is because of lack of abundant supplies and lot of demand. Uh, so uh, we can uh, uh, comment it again uh, uh, based on obviously the precautions, the safeguards and also abundant supplies. So that is one issue. The second issue is in the PHCs itself, uh, uh, we have taken a decision to have the, uh, uh, have the vaccination camps Maybe not in uh, PHC buildings, but outside the PHC buildings in uh, maybe parks, playgrounds, or community centers in open spaces where uh, uh, the, the fear that uh, you know you may catch uh, COVID uh, uh, even for the when you come for vaccination, etc. That fear can be uh, uh, you know uh, removed from the minds of the people. So that also we are taking it up. Uh, today we have another meeting about to commence shortly in which we have talked about uh, vaccination and testing with our officers and uh, uh, we will uh, issue detailed guidelines. What so I would, I, yeah, sorry. Sure, sir. Vishnu, if I may just add, sorry, on that point. I'll, and I'll sure. specifically mm -hmm. discuss with you, Gaurav, sir, when you're free. I mean, for the 45 plus uh, priority category, if we may consider uh, on-site uh, uh, deployment of uh, vaccination camps, uh, I can assure you from our side, we'll be able to streamline the process and procedure in such a manner that even that crowding we can reduce. We'll ensure that there's a very nice protocol which is put together where not more than 8 to 10 people are called in for a slot at any given point of time. Fine, so that fine, extra fine. we can uh, streamline that. So please do consider if we can. Absolutely. absolutely. Uh, I, oh, I, plus, definitely. I look forward to working with you on, on this matter. I'm sure our colleagues will also do so. And uh, uh, let me let me only say that uh, uh, let the st uh, supplies stabilize. Uh, we are getting better supplies in the last two days, and we hope that it will become better. Kobe Shield, as you know, as uh, second dose has to be administered after 12 weeks now. So uh, uh, mostly people will not come for the second dose here and after. So it will have to be first dose of Kobe Shield. Uh, obviously, the first priority remains to be 45 plus. Right now, we are not going into 18 to 44 till the time we are able to saturate the demand of 45 plus. And subsequently, uh, we will then open 18 to 44 as uh, after the consultation at the government level. So uh, that, that will do. So uh, there is another question that comes up here. Uh, after recovering from COVID, when, when, you, when one can take vaccination? This is a medical question. I don't want to answer that. But I'm sure that uh, after 10 or 15 days, when uh, 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 persons get automatically discharged, uh, and uh, there's no protocol that you need to be tested negative. But uh, I, I think uh, uh, after 15 days or so, uh, uh, you should be able to get the second vaccination. But again, the experts will uh, uh, will clarify and uh, say it further. 
Sure. So, uh, I, I, uh, any other question, and I will, uh, I would have to leave. Uh, uh, Thank you very much, sir. So we would uh, not hold you back. So you can go ahead with your next meeting. So we will continue with next few more questions. Thanks a lot for joining in. Thank you. Uh, Vishnu, Vishnu, this is Prabhu. Uh, this question related to my using the guest houses for the isolation for part that can be. Vishnu, have we completed all the set of questions? With the questions, I'll quickly run through the questions. Then, then we'll take the other question. Sorry for that. Just I'll quickly run through those. So, uh, just as an add-on question to the vaccination, Randeep sir or Manjula ma'am, so, so is it possible that ca there can be one point of contact or a spark uh, that there are so many PHCs within Madhyapura zone? So, can there be one person who has been named as a spark for vaccination-related queries and uh, streamlining the vaccination process in Madhyapura zone? Yeah, you can take my number. I'm Dr. Surendra. Okay, sir. Dr. Surendra, right? Yeah, I, I, I have your number. Yes, sir. I will one, one submission. From today onwards, 45 plus yeah. first dose is we are going to give in all the PHCs and all the subsectors. It is okay. It is okay. okay. Any yeah, 45 plus aged any person can, to, can come to our PHC and get it vaccinated. No problem. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. The next, uh, next I'll move on to first the next dose. topic, which first is testing. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sir. Got it. Thank you. In the interest of time, we only have 18 minutes left. I'll try to rush through. So this testing point already, uh, like, you know, can BBMP be given an option? Because there was a point there were a lot of testing and then later on we uh, scaled down the testing. So as Randeep sir said, we will we will we'll wait to hear from them on how the ramped up testing is going to happen in the apartments. Because currently in the last couple of weeks, it was very less after the camps were cancelled. So that's, that's one question. The next question moving on is... Uh, so is the primary contact testing still recommended? That's also the testing question, sir. Zero, day zero and day seven. No, I, I think the protocol uh, has to be uh, done. Uh, and, uh, and, and that is where I'm coming. Unless we test our primary contacts, uh, let us all understand that this uh, wave is unlike the last wave. Uh, so this time, uh, people are getting affected in families. I mean, as a bunch of people, right? Earlier, it was even if a COVID positive patient was infected, the other family members would not, probably the infectivity of the virus was not that much. So primary contacts testing becomes absolutely critical in this manner. And I think we should not be compromising. Uh, we should, in fact, go one step more. And I'm more worried because the hospitalization is more this time. I would not have been that concerned with infectivity but that now is leading to a lot of late admissions in hospitals and we are losing a lot of people and we are losing young uh, uh, people also along with seniors, uh, which is highly distressing. And, and I don't think that something which is preventable, treatable at an early stage should be ignored at all. Uh, just to tell you some test cases, uh, uh, we are having cases where chest is getting infected with absolutely no other symptoms. And seventh, eighth day, we are finding the person uh, getting into a cytokine storm and landing up at the hospital. And that at that late hour to reach them a critical care bed becomes an issue. So, which is why fundamentally, I need to go back to testing and early tracking of such patients. And there is a 99% chance that a primary contact would be positive this time in this way, vis-a-vis uh, -vis comparison to the last wave. Yep. Sure, sir. Thank you. So the genome sequencing yeah, question was already question. answered. Yeah. One question along uh, with the question. Ma'am, Dr. Ask? Punima, I'll, I'll just come back to that. So we will we'll open up for the questions. I think there's just only three more questions. So I'll finish that. Then we'll open the okay. questions that are in the chat. Just give me three. Okay. So okay. The, the next most asked question, which is also frustrated, uh, you know, BAF uh, leadership people also, is uh, okay. So the maids issue, right? So from one point of view, when I interacted with uh, JC sir uh, of Madhyapura, Venkatachal sir, one thing is very clear for all RWS is that right now there is no right of movement for non-essential people on the roads, right? The yeah, the is. provision of six a.m. to 10, 10, 10 a.m. is only for you know buying the groceries and vegetables or things like that. It's not for maids to come in and maids to go, and no one has the right of way if not if it's not for a medical emergency. That, with that being said, still there are some departments where you know some people try to find some loopholes and all that. So I think this point which Manjula Ma'am has touched upon that for now there is no way that maids can work. But JC sir, you please add your uh, thoughts on that here. Yeah. yeah, I would I would say that uh, probably essential caretakers if there are senior citizens. Uh, 
uh, we should not lose that human touch uh, just to ensure that if 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 somebody requires an actual caretaker support and that caretaker needs to come and go we can have a mechanism wherein uh, that caretaker is tested every 10 days uh, just to ensure uh, they are fine uh, but other than that i think the regular uh, houses which are able to manage uh, should not uh, be very insistent on maids coming and going Uh, that would be my personal opinion uh, but uh, if you want us to put it in writing uh, i would say that that uh, uh, would be a bit harsh on all of us because some would definitely require some senior citizens would require yes, sir, <laughs> just coming to that point sir there are some senior citizens who have for example a medical nurse right so they have their medical id card they are coming in and treating or a physiotherapist coming in those are totally different but some people just okay we i mean associations also are just very uh, you know considerate in those cases but some people just want to use some loophole saying that i need uh, some physiotherapy or massage or they want to get in their maid some people okay. give a pretext that uh, it's for my child uh, teaching i mean people are very creative i mean <laughs> hilarious i mean it's it's, it's yeah. yeah so i i would put it that any non essential uh, non emergency kind of uh, service Uh, needs to be discouraged and uh, if 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 we are facing more and more problems in certain uh, thing please start reporting that we will just come and put a testing camp and start testing all of them and and i think that itself people will stop coming once we do that and radeep sir if i may add i think in the earlier point that you mentioned in terms of exchanging a kind of a a, a, a practical framework we will share something with you which we have sort of advised but yeah i think if that can be collaboratively uh, uh, endorsed in a certain sense i think i completely agree with you that we need to uh, sustain the empathy we can't go extreme harsh but at the same time i think the situation demands for something which is which where we need to uh, um, to reflect that sensitivity and and the sense of sacrifice right to be able to be done by everybody so we will share some thoughts and if we can just jointly endorse that then that might also be a good way to share it across. sure thank you we are come to the final two questions uh, sir randeep sir you being the swm uh, commissioner also so you will be you should be able to answer probably these so we had a meeting with kspcb last week where these points were touched upon so uh, there are two two parts of the questions that people have been asking one is the spread via the stps and the drain systems or flush in the toilets which kspcb <laughs> categorically ruled out stating that it's not possible to spread via the drainage systems within the apartments but the second part of the question is more about there are some many apartments which have reported like you know if there is my apartment has a covid case it's likely that the the flat above me can get a case or the one who is near to my duck can get a case but case pcp has been clearly stating that we don't have enough data yet they said they will come up with a guidance but it has never been coming up but it is it has been proven with so many requests that me and vikram and others have got that it it is prevalent that there is some sort of a aerosol spread or something is happening for sure but what do you think what do you suggest as a uh, things that people can do uh, for those precautions randeep sir can you hear us or could drop okay the i think he got dropped off so maybe the next call but his uh, thing is oh, line audio may be an issue so the next uh, next and final question is uh, something was said that you know in, in apartment cases it was told uh, just to increase uh, a little bit of uh, flo- chlorine content within the stps to kill the uh, you know the covid uh, virus that comes via the sewage systems any specific uh, medical ca- or a kind of an advice that okay this is the quantum or any anything specific that or it's just random uh, amount that can be added that's the final question those are the two questions in terms of the waste treatment covid waste treatment vishnu randeep sir is on uh, phone that's why okay, okay. Yeah. sure no problem so vishnu, the main... we should also do and i'm going to follow that up uh, with the case pcb team as well to yeah. come up with some kind of a formal uh, uh, communication <laughs> which at least uh, gives some clarity on the matter sorry of- i was on a important call uh, so you want me to respond on the uh, stp one uh, stp or aerosol uh, vishnu your uh, connection is a little bad maybe you have to switch off your videos but yes randeep sir yes i, I think two two points one is uh, i think kspcb has very clearly clarified that you know once the uh, there is sewage 
right because there is other chemical uh, mixtures over there the uh, the the possibility of that being a source of spread a medium of spread becomes very less uh, uh, and absolutely not once treated basically so they have ruled that out but i think they were not conclusive in 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 stating whether there can be any other forms of aerosol communication especially in apartments okay. where there's so a duct get head. some uh, clarity i'm i'm also not competent yeah we'll follow continue to follow but i think from even bbmp said if there can be a push for them sure. to come with some clarity i mean uh, would be good because there are some uh, i mean uh, uh, local investigative <laughs> patterns which are being shared saying that you know this same series duct pot potentially may be cause of spread we need to be able to address that as well just just send me a message so that i uh, stay with me and i can follow it up we'll do that yeah anything sure, else sir. yeah so i think uh, with that we have 10 minutes left maybe i'll quickly look at some of the questions on the chat so there was one uh, a uh, question that came from uh, prabhu patil from rohan vasanta where they had they facing a weird case where one uh, resident came and occupied uh, like the guest house of an association uh, and using it as an isolation center and neither stepping out nor taking in uh, this thing and uh, trying to just i mean even though there are clear rules so what to do in such cases like you know people trying to misuse apartment facilities and trying to occupy those and uh, use it as a uh, covid case center it's, it's a weird case but yeah it happened so there there somebody from outside has come and uh, used it yeah so some residents uh, relative has come and that guy has nicely put that guy in one of the guest house available in the rwa so mm-hmm. that, that's what happened yeah okay okay so if it remains an isolation center they use it for future uh, future mild covid cases also and continue yes, something... yeah this is prabhu patil sir yeah this is this is a covid care center where meant we have already bought the required items but now this is he's asking for the isolation normal isolation should 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 have been done at the home isolation this then is a normal okay. isolation there is no patient is don't don't have any symptoms just to uh, isolate the person he has put there in the guest house so uh, i would say the larger point is will rws like to keep some uh, rooms like that within the apartment complexes is that part of your larger goal uh say to keep the mildly symptomatic yes sir that, that is that is the goal support. in this case of this specific case they already have a covid care center but uh, on top of it they have a, like guest rooms kind of a separate room so this is in this case the person going beyond ccc and uh, okay. occupying yes, one sir. of the rooms yeah then then it's your call yeah yeah can i quickly uh, just uh, intervene on that question uh, randeep sir see i think uh, at least from bf's point of view also we been in uh, guiding and advising uh, apartments to say that look at two to three levels of uh, community support right one is where if you have empty houses please do seek the support of and uh, and concurrence of the owners to allow it to be used as isolation homes for some time because that's the easiest thing to be done considering the fact that many houses may not have uh, absolute ability to isolate right second is we have said if you can create a saw, small sort of equipment plus volunteer plus clinical support kind of a stabilization uh, process third is of course if there are large apartments which can have uh, facilities they can do like a ccc itself right uh, like with hospital partnerships right? so my response prabhu to that would be see this is a very i mean you, in your case the you have created a covid care center right uh, which we where is the specific complaint that somebody is not willing to use that and instead of that wants to use a a set of uh, rooms which are not at all uh, set aside for that is that what you are suggesting uh, no vikram what is uh, my our understanding is covid care center is basically for the emergency purpose before shifting it to the hospital so not where the medical, no, no, medical, no, 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 where the where the medical medical thing is on an emergency basis but no, no, now no. since we don't have a isolation any do no doctor support anything may happen that's the reason which uh, which we are never our uh, encourage to use as isolation trip because there is a lot of demand for many people to use that till now we are never un- allowed anybody because that is their own risk means their own capacity to manage their isolation at a home either they have to manage at the home or they have a community center where it's managed by the bbmp either these are the two facilities normally available but here this is additional things will be created apart from the ccc ccc is basically meant for the emergency purpose that is our understanding it is that as per the guidelines no no so my my simple understanding of the matter is that if you have beyond homes infrastructure and facilities however extensive or non extensive it might be let me put it that way right it is up to you and the residents to see whether the cases are are fit enough to use that facility now if you think that the a particular facility is beyond what is the need or the risk of a particular patient you will have to advise them saying that this is not 
relevant to use you need to look at uh, other forms as i understand this is a mild or an asymptomatic case who just needs to stay under home isolation right if if you think that you know the center isolation will help and they don't have space or whatever that can that is yeah. essentially up to the association to to agree right because it's a common infrastructure that somebody is using if they if, if they don't and is a force then yeah i mean it's unnecessary uh, friction and conflict right uh, but beyond that are you being loaded on the risk of somebody's uh, foolish uh, act absolutely not how can that be the case yeah uh, no, so, i i think prabhu sorry uh, can can you and i and vikram can take it offline yeah, in the four minutes can, left we'll find a solution offline sure, sure. Yeah? yeah yeah we'll do it in the interest of time i'll take maybe quick two three questions from youtube and chat so uh, talay selvi's question is do apartments need any permission there were some recently news reports that came that uh, uh apartments cannot keep oxygen cylinders or concentrators is it true or can they still go ahead and store oxygen cylinders if as a backup maybe one or two cylinders you are asking uh, whether you can keep that backup within the system yeah back within the societies I, i would only put it that if you know the operational manual and whom to use it on and that's okay. what i mean the, otherwise don't take the risk at least i would i would say you should have some nurse or somebody who knows how to operate okay. uh, because uh, i'm not sure there is no regular standard template on how to use whom to use it on what is the okay. flow so does the apartment want to take that risk uh, i would still advise that let some kind of a medical hand holding be there uh, somebody is a visiting nurse or uh, uh, paramedic who can help if that is there by all means have it it is essential it can save lives uh, in those critical times when bed is to be found those 6 8 hours it does help yeah and with all this black fungus and all that going around so i mean the blame again should not come to you come. that those cylinders were old and uh, they could not be refilled properly and all of that yeah sure sir got it yeah so no one one more question I take from youtube uh, maybe the last question is can people walk in directly for 45 plus for first dose of vaccination because dr surendra mentioned that now maybe from tomorrow they're opening up for first dose is it uh, Dr. Dr. Surendra, please answer. Ah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, on spot and online registration, both uh, they can do and uh, they can walk into the PHC, sir. Okay. Okay, great, sir. Then uh, I think that then I think Dr. Sri Lakshmi Purnima, you had one question, right? You raised. Uh, uh, could you please ask your question? Dr. Sri Lakshmi, are you there? Okay. If not, then maybe one last question from anyone on the call. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I see here, many of the YouTube. Yeah, yeah. 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 See, why is genome sequence done? You know, because you know we have you know the virulent virus. That's that's been answered already, Murli, sir. Oh, that's, sorry, that's been answered in the first half. Yeah. Okay. Oh, sir, okay. I have a question on any other question. Plus, forty-five plus vaccination. Yeah. Uh, the PHC is in our area, right? Never show up green. Actually, I have been watching it for last whole one month. daily basis like morning afternoon evening night till o'clock so desperately watching and trying to help out my rwa uh, to get it but uh, is there uh, i feel that they are only giving uh, walk in tokens can you uh, help open up uh, them to give at least a percentage of tokens online uh, i can definitely say that it is not opening at least in uh, 35 37 areas right i have never seen a green for last whole one month i am daily doing it diligently so they have kept it uh, kept it in red and only walk ins are allowed you should give a percentage for uh, online booking also yeah the, especially the phc surendra regarding vaccination yeah if the crowd is more the phc people are issuing the tokens in one session uh, we can create only 100 uh, uh, persons to get vaccinate now we are not doing uh, vaccination in phcs we have opened sub center also and uh, from uh, today onwards you can go and have your uh, first dose uh, even we are doing for uh, healthcare workers and uh, frontline workers also we will insert the sir so, so the point is this like uh, the people right they are scared to move out without appointment and it is showing always yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you can you can go the yeah, that's what i am telling yeah you can go you can you take your aadhar card go on the spot to register and get it vaccinated yeah yeah i think yeah, i will can answer you, can you open up one small percentage as you are using 10 yeah, uh, 100 uh, vaccinations per day can you give online only 20 would... at least some so that we will have a guarantee right 
Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. From today is the on spot also it's opened. Uh, since one week. No, we need we... online, not on spot. No, no, Mr. Raghu, I will just. One that. Since one week, we are yeah. doing one. From one week, we were doing only online registration because there was no, just to go for, finish the second dose. And uh, now the second dose has been extended to uh, 12 to 16 weeks. So yesterday, since yesterday night, they told us to go for 45 plus first dose also. Online and on spot also. You can go to the PHC and get it back. Yeah. Okay, so... I. Think it's just one concluding remark on that, which I had discussed with uh, um, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Devraja, who is the DCP of Madhavpura. So there has been some instances where if the walk-ins are people are trying to walk in for vac vaccination by, by moving in the car during the curfew hours, there has been some challenges because police also clearly stated that if you are moving in without a proper appointment, so of course, if your PHC is in a walking distance from your apartment or something, that might be still okay, but... Uh, it's, it's been a logistical challenge for even for police. They also express their helplessness. If there is no appointment or some sort of a proof that you show that you are going for vaccination, that they cannot simply allow thousands of people going on the main roads is what uh, police also express their helplessness. I think we have to work out a smart solution, but I think beyond that, there's nothing much can be done at the moment, right? So I think everybody's hands are tied at the moment. So my request is PHC should open online bookings. They are always keeping it red and... Uh... Uh, walk in only they entertain walk in that is not right way right at least 20 percent 30 percent they should open up for yeah. the online booking and yeah. i can definitely challenge uh, that uh, i have been doing it diligently for the last whole month right yeah. daily morning afternoon evening night 12 o'clock i daily wake keep myself awake till 12 o'clock to check 35 and 37 pin codes and it is always red and it is only showing up for the next day so this is the I challenge think, uh, and they should open it up for online uh, booking i don't know what is happening yeah Dr. Surendra, I think we have to work on that because now if we just say everything is spot, we don't know how many people will line up also no, in front of the PHC. Now That's that everybody right. gets an idea that vaccine is available, you don't want 1,000 people lining up in the morning. So that also becomes yeah. difficult to handle. So we'll That's have to work out some way That's to, uh, to enable online booking also. So at least it gives you... Yeah, partially something. online, partially... Uh... Walk-in, right? You have to enter it in walk-in. Yeah, for people who don't... Yeah, walk-in yeah, also, online also. Yeah, yeah. both are there. We are missing yeah. online booking for PHC's uh, desperately yes. at least. Uh, that is, that is the problem. And also, we need to make sure that which PHC's, uh, PHC's have uh, uh, co-vaccin and which has Covishield because some people go to some PHC's and they say, no, we don't have Covishield. We are only putting co-vaccin. So, but, there's a lot of confusion on that. No, no, as of now, we are not we are not using any co-vaccine and no supply of co-vaccine is there. Okay, okay. only COVID shield. Only COVID shield that we, we were doing only for second dose. From second dose. Onwards, uh, we were doing first dose also, COVID shield only. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Vishnu, I need to log off. Sure. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, one question uh, regarding people moving out from uh, containment as in uh, positive COVID positive homes, uh, if they have a pet or something, they want to walk it or they want to take the dog out. Is there so, any guidelines? There are BF guidelines which you could, uh, which we could say, share it or please reach out to the BF uh, zone, uh, zona leader or cluster leader because in the interest of time, we are already four minutes over time. We have done more than 94 minutes. I would say just uh, to respect everyone's time on a Sunday. So I think there's enough uh, uh, thinking and clarity on that part. BF has circulated documents on that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah. All right, yeah. Vikram, conclusion, word of thanks, quick. Thank you. Thank you. No, thanks, uh, Randeep, sir, Manjula, ma'am. And I think uh, it was extremely useful, uh, as always. I think conversations like this are extremely uh, uh, essential uh, because it helps, just helps, to, uh, I think, us to take steps beyond just uh, guidelines and documents and WhatsApp groups. It gives a lot more confidence, trust. So thank you so much, Randeep sir, Manjula ma'am, Gaurav Gupta sir, and Rakesh Singh. Let's continue the conversation. Uh, please uh, 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 enlist us anytime to, for any action that might be required. We are with you on that. And uh, we believe that the next two to three weeks, we should not let our guard down. I think we should extremely strongly focus on bringing the, at least from our side, from the community side, the focus on uh, controlling the search, decreasing the incremental numbers, right? And bringing it down is very, very essential. 
as the uh, hospitalization and that system can be stabilized by all of you. So thank you so much for your time, uh, for your courtesy today. Uh, we will stay in touch on some of the other action points and uh, have a good day, uh, everybody.